I'm back at Brada Ease, where you have to be over 50% Hawaiian blood to live back here. Unfortunately, his mom just passed away and he asked me to harvest a bunch of reef fish for her funeral. So I'm getting ready to do a big dive. If you've seen my Instagram or watch any of my other videos before, you know that I only like to harvest one to three fish typically just for me. But today is definitely gonna be the most fish I probably ever killed. It's gonna be a big funeral feeding a lot of people. I'm gonna try and do my work and take out a lot of invasives as well. He's got a couple of special requests that I'm gonna try and take care of. I'll let Brady E explain more about it later. Right now I'm just itching to get in that water, man. It's looking amazing. I've never seen it this flat over here before. So I'm gonna gear up, get ready, and get in there. Shoot. All right, I got the war paint on. It's sunny. It's beautiful out here. And now it's time to go check out the water. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. So flat today. It's never this flat over here. It's so rare these conditions are like this. I've actually never seen it this flat over here. I just hope that I can help out, you know, in any way I can. I feel really honored that Brada E would ask me to do this for him. So I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm only gonna die for two hours. So we'll see what we can make happen within that time amount. Ho ho ho! That's always breaking right there. Just sets. Ah! You hardly ever could launch from this side. Normally that's like a big toilet bowl with three to four sets breaking. Oh my gosh, the water is so crystal clear. I kind of wish I would have brought my gun now. But the Evolve CT9 always comes through. So like I said, normally you can't dive here. I dive here pretty rare now because I'm mostly on Kona side. But one important thing that I like to make note is rotating your spots. You know, I may end up taking a lot of fish here for the funeral, but like I said, no one, no one dives here. You know, I'm pretty much the only diver that comes out here to these grounds and at my depths. Unless, you, unless you're on a boat, that's the only other way you can pretty much dive here, so. These are pretty untouched grounds. But anyway, yeah, rotating your spots, super important. I'm just dripping sweat, I gotta get in the water. First drop on this beautiful, gorgeous day. I spotted this reef castle-like structure and I just had to take a drop and explore it. Look at how clear and colorful the reef is today. The spot can be pretty notorious for being super murked out, but this is the clearest I've ever seen it. 
Brother E wants a little bit of everything, so I'm a little bit overwhelmed on trying to figure out how I'm going to attack this mission in two hours. <laughs> I throw some grunts out there to see if anything's gonna come in. I'm checking out these munus and just waiting for a good shot on them. I end up not shooting anything and just kinda warming up the lungs on my first drop. On my next drop, I notice this fat cole hiding under this boulder right here. He's pretty massive, so I decided to take him for my first fish of the session. Not the greatest shot, but the Evolve tree prong always get him. <laughs> I turn around and bing, I spot a nice munu. Goatfish is one of my faves to grind. As I'm swimming up, I feel a snag on my belt and notice my tagline got caught on a coral head. So I quickly unclip it and head to the surface for some air. Look how beautiful and clear the water is. I'm still tripping out. <laughs> One of the fish Brada E requested was a bunch of white bars or Michael Eco. He likes to call them Michaels. He was telling me about this killer recipe he makes with the gonads. Some kind of creamy sauce. We're gonna have to get him to show us that one day. So I start stacking a couple on the kui. Evolve does make a bunch of different size pole spears. They got a different style of pole spear for pretty much anything you want to hunt. Small reef fish, big reef fish, blue water, you name it. I rock the CT9, which can be a bit overkill for these smaller reef fish if you power it up too much. They have another series called the Carbon Speed Pole Spear, which is another breakdown pole spear like mine, so it's easy to travel with. They start at $115, but Uncle has a special promo code for you hammers, which will knock off 10% off your entire order. That makes the Carbon Speed Pole Spear around $100 only. For that type of quality, you're not gonna be able to beat that anywhere on the market. It's the best bang for your buck for sure. So go check out EvolveDiving.com and use promo code HAMA for 10% off your entire order. It helps Uncle out as well. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or send me a message on Instagram and I'll be glad to help you out. I started out with a Walmart special like everyone else in Hawaii and then I made the investment and I just jumped up straight to the CT9. I've almost had it for about three years now and I've only changed the rubber on it once. So it's definitely been an amazing investment. I smash this nice size cole and then I look down and this big puhi is coming in for a bite. So I had to dip out of that spot. A couple more massive coles. Tripping out on how big these guys are.
I've just been putting on a show for these baby moo right here. Monsters! This is my Kui after diving for around 30 minutes. So I'm off to a decent start. Got the slow mo promo. Going nine nine. And then my belt Kui gets caught on this coral head. I love shooting Roy and getting them off the reef. I'd say about 90% of the people who kill them don't eat them. But Breda E grinds them. He's been eating them forever and has never gotten sig poisoning. It's one of his favorite fish to eat. But he only eats them from his area. Certain areas can have higher levels of cigatera toxins, so consume at your own risk. I spot another Roy, a baby one, but he's on to me and won't give me a decent shot. This big Okole is asking for it. So I give it, but I get rejected by the boulder behind it and the Okole gets off. The old smashing dash. I've made it to the promised land of Nenui. I don't know why, but every time I shoot a fish, I always look right. I just love this shot right here with all the Nenui's surrounding me. All hail the queen. Miss Queen Nenui. Back in the day when the Hawaiians would catch the queen, they would always put her back because it would bring good luck and they would catch more Nenuis. Now that the queen has cleared out, I take one of her trusty, tasty soldiers. The evolved tree prong holding on right there. Oop, there goes the queen. I haven't been seeing too much top air around, which is pretty awesome. So I plug this guy and get him off the reef. As you've seen in my last video with Brada E, living off the Aina, Brada E is a master chef and can make any fish taste delicious. This tiny ass Roy right there tries to juke me out. But I give him the creep mode. And move in and smash him. This is like the perfect size for grind if you're willing to risk it. These smaller Roy got a lot less sig in them. Another nine nine going nine nine. Another fat Roy I'm stalking right here. Oh, that CT9 is loaded, ready to rock. I see a little opening between these two rocks and I let them fly. I 
I look down and there's a tiny little lobster right there just chilling, thanking me for taking this Roy off the reef. Popped another Roy. And then I look below me and oof, a big slithering eel right below my belt. So I gave him some distance and grab another full size cole on my way up. I've kind of fallen into Roy territory now. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see a nice dozer of Milu in the back. <laughs> He's on the other side of the boulder. <laughs> I give him some grunts to bring him in. <laughs> I make my way over the boulders to intercept him. <laughs> but he's over it and dips out. Another little baby Roy just lurking in the shadows. I extend for a shot. <laughs> but he sees me and dips out. Now I focus on these white bars, but as you can see, they're super skittish now. But as always, there's no escaping the CT9. I switch it up a little bit and start going for this Munu. He senses danger and it kind of dips out. But then he changes his mind and comes back for another little sneak peek. But his ultimate decision was to keep his distance. Nothing really coming in so I turn around and I see all these white lines. So I reach out and grab one. I see another Roy just lurking under that boulder right there. He sees me and then he backs up. And then this Kikakapu comes out and blocks my shot. Trying to help out the ecosystem a little bit and take out some of these invasives. I've been running a total of three kuis. This is my third and last kui that I've been working on. Been smashing all that roy. All of this will get eaten. I've been watching this massive Mu, who's just been following me way out in the distance. He's been pretty shy, then I bust out my Mu call, and he just can't help himself. He comes in closer and closer and closer. Boom, and I got a perfect stone shot on him. Next, we have a big old black kupipi here. A pretty underrated fish, if you ask me. How's this okole shot? Scaled it. I spot this palani right here and I want to add them to the kui to get a nice variety of fish for brada e. I'm stalking this Roy that's on the other side of this rock. My concentration is at an all-time high right now. 
And then, how's this guy? As soon as I let go, he full on dodges my shot like he saw it coming a mile away. That Roy is gonna be a pain in the ass when he grows up, guarantee. I look behind me to make sure no one saw that cause it's kinda embarrassing. But I shake it off and snag me a delicious umamale. I spot another umamale lurking in the shadows. It's my last drop of the session. I'm pretty burnt out now. I did a lot of diving and so I start to head in. I am done. All of this fish right here will all be eaten at the Ho'o Leva. Pretty stoked I was able to get a bunch of fish that Brother E requested. By far the most fish I've ever shot in my life. I think the most fish I ever shot was about 10 kole one time. So this is a pretty crazy amount for me. But I know Breda E is gonna appreciate it, so I'm stoked. But I gotta haul all this crap back to my truck and get them bad boys on ice. All nice and clean. I had the rinse off, I felt like shiznit. Oh, a lot of work to do. I gotta go back. I left the fish and stuff in the little tide pool down there. Came back just to just to rinse off and eat and oh. oh man, I just ate way too fast. Oh. Okay, so I gotta get back to the tide pool. Get the fish, clean couple fish, get the rest on ice, and then uh, go cook these bad boys up. Shoo, yoo, yoo. Oh, made it. I was worried maybe a puhi or an eel or something might be whacking my fish, but still, oh gee. All right, I got them all cleaned up and we are gonna grind these guys. They're 
there's one fat nenui, fat nenui in there, one small roy, a couple kole, and Unks wanted some Michaels. I'm trying to get low so the wind doesn't hit the hit the camera, but and then I'm gonna give all of this to Brother E for the funeral. I also want to do something just for us, separate. Cause like, mom thing is a memorial thing, huh? Yeah. And then, are you filming, babe? Oh, video? Yeah. No, video. And then you can just grab did, a still. In a bead you. No, oh my gosh. Oh my it's heavy, bro. Fuck, I look about 80 pounds. <laughs> bro, look at that fucking Roy. Oh. Don't fuck about 30 pound Roy. What the fuck? Can't carry this. Oh, it's squeezing my hand. Alright. That was the opportunity. Thank you. Meat. That's a lot. I can, get, I can get a better one if I can find a better angle on this. This is what's hurting my hand. Choking him, huh? Yeah. Oh, 99. Bro, we love that. 99 is good. Palami is good. I never saw no. uh, any Paka Kui Kui's out there. I was surprised. Really? Yeah. Mine. Yeah. It's a bottle of Nui, not a bottle of Nui. Eruptions. Dude. So what do we have here? Kalani, Royce. Bro, you fuck up. Oh my God. I like the way the thing's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. I wish they was all spinning. Spins. Yeah. For grandma friend. You guys want a bag of ice too? Whatever you get. What is the tea leaf lay for? Um, tea leaf. I mean, could be energy or protection. No, this particular one. This one is um, protection, keeping our spirits strong and clean, and um, also to ho'omana, to keep strong, to empower our friends and families during these um, tough times. We want to just give each other energy um, to ho'omana and carry forward. Ho'omana. Ho'omana. It's a Hawaiian religion. Mm -hmm. Ho'omana is just like what you do. You know, diving, loving life. It's ho'omana. You got a ho'o to make the mana. So uh, I didn't film too much because I wasn't trying to stick a camera at everyone during these tough times. If you guys could do me a solid favor and write Breda E or Uncle E a beautiful message for him and his ohana, I'd really appreciate it. If you don't know who he is, I made a really cool video of him a while back called Special Access. His mom was one of the kindest people ever. She was a nurse for over 40 years and a 100% pure-blooded Hawaiian. There aren't many of those left these days, so it was a really big hit on the Ohana and the Aina. Mahalos to everyone. Cheese.